one of the things you will look at on your soil test is magnesium. Now we want you to look at the magnesium parts per million because you have to have enough parts per million or pounds per acre to raise a good crop and every crop has a chart telling you how much you really need. But the other thing you need to look at is the base saturation magnesium percentage. And here's one of the reasons why this is such a big deal. Too much magnesium, that's the big problem we have in a lot of the Midwest, too much magnesium means you have a really tight soil. Magnesium is a very, very, very tiny particle in relation to calcium. So we talk all the time about calcium and magnesium. Calcium is really big. Magnesium is really tiny. And because magnesium is so tiny, if you get a preponderance of magnesium out there, then what you have is very little oxygen getting down in the soil. So generally, you don't have as much air down deep, meaning you don't have as many roots down deep, and that's a real problem. Yeah, it's really interesting how you can manipulate soil structure by nutrient applications. It, it just kind of blew my mind when we first started looking at this that, you know, on a heavy clay soil, we probably want to get that magnesium down in the 12 to 14 percent range on a base saturation test. But if we've got a really light sandy soil, we may like it up more like 18 percent. So it may be quite a bit higher because we want to hold that soil together a little bit more. And also magnesium attracts water. If we can hold a little more water in a lighter textured soil, that's a good thing. So yes, this is a really big important nutrient for that. It's also really important because magnesium is the center of the chlorophyll molecule. And when we think about what are we trying to do here in fields, well, we're trying to capture sunlight, use water and nutrients, and make something good, like making corn or making wheat or making soybeans. And if you're going to do that, you're going to need plenty of magnesium out there for your crop. So the magnesium discussion is a little odd because with most nutrients, we say, yep, we have to keep putting more out there, have to keep putting more out there. Think about nitrogen and sulfur and boron, potassium, phosphorus. We don't ever have situations where we go, wow, we have too much phosphorus naturally in our soil. We don't want that much. But that's exactly what we often say about magnesium. So Darren mentioned already the sandy soils. Magnesium doesn't hold very well in a super sandy soil. So in sandy soils, yes, it's very common that you need to add magnesium. But in the really heavy clay soils, well, like in our area, for example, the type of clay we have is montmorillonite clay. Well, one of the components of montmorillonite clay is magnesium. So we naturally have a tremendous amount of magnesium in the soil. And like I was saying earlier, in some cases, we just flat out have too much. So when we have too much, what we usually do is just put a bunch more calcium out there and sulfur, and hopefully over time, we'll change the ratio a little bit, number one, between calcium and sulfur, and number two, throwing some sulfate out, the sulfate can combine with the magnesium to form magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salts. Epsom salts are leachable, so we can flush some of the magnesium out over time. Okay, here's one of the challenges though, Brian. Even in soils that have lots of magnesium, in the very early spring when it's cold out, it's just not very available. And we know this, growing up on a cow-calf operation, we would have to put out some sort of supplement for our cattle Otherwise, they would get what was known as grass tetany. They were short of magnesium. And our soil tests were extremely high in magnesium. It made no sense to me that availability was going to be so greatly impacted by the temperatures. So this is something that you have to watch on your crop throughout the season. This is one of the reasons that we suggest taking plant tissue analysis throughout the season, just to see, you know, are there certain times of year that magnesium is more important early season availability is one where magnesium may be a little bit of a challenge. So if you need magnesium, whether it's because your soil's cold, your plant tissue analysis is low, your soil test shows low, there are a lot of different forms of magnesium, a lot of ways you can get it. The cheapest way for a lot of people is just to put lime out there that is high in magnesium. We would call that dolomitic lime. You can also find products like K-Mag, where it's potassium and magnesium together. There's just straight magnesium sulfate, like we talked about Epsom salts a little bit ago. So there are a lot of products that do contain magnesium, including many foliar products and many infero products that you could use on your farm. Well, magnesium is a very important nutrient. It is a secondary nutrient, so we don't need quite as many pounds as we need of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But secondary nutrients are right in there after that, and magnesium as the center of the chlorophyll molecule has extreme importance for your crop. So make sure you're doing complete soil analysis this fall. 
Take a look at magnesium, both in parts per million and also in the base saturation percentage that you have. It's important for soil structure and important for plant health. Unfortunately, whether you're high or low in magnesium, it just seems like our Weed of the Week keeps growing. Can you identify this week's weed?